Hey guys, how are y'all doing today? Uh, welcome back. This is the Little Bean and Me podcast channel for those who are new. My name's Kayleen and I'm your host. I am a the <laughs> I am the principal fiber artist and yarn dyer behind Little Bean Crochet on Etsy and LittleBeanLovesYarn.com. As always, you'll find my information here on the screen and you'll also find it below in the down bar. Um, along with some timestamps for things that I'm going to be talking about today. This is going to be a very full episode, so I'm hoping my battery lasts out of my camera so I can get through everything that I need to get through. Um, hopefully the editing will be a little bit better. I was using a different software last week, so that's why it kind of looked and felt a little bit different. Um, it was easier for me to edit, but the, the functionality, like the title screens and stuff that I really like to use, weren't in this software, so I was kind of frustrated with that. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully it's pretty good. All right, we have lots to get into today. Uh, first, I wanna say thank you. Thank you so much for being here with me. Thank you so much for subscribing, for following along. I'm glad you're liking this channel. Um, today we are going to be announcing giveaway winners and I'm gonna do that first off right here, right now on camera filming. Um, and I'm gonna pull the winners from the Ravelry group. So last week I asked you guys for the 1,000 subscriber giveaway. I would be drawing two prizes, which I will show you the complete prizes as they are, because I've gotten them together and finalized. Um, I would draw two prizes from my Ravelry group. So in the thread, I asked you to answer me these questions three. Is there stuff on this lens? I feel like there's stuff on the lens. Better? Is that better? Lens. Lens dirtiness. Um, anyway, I asked you to answer me these questions three, uh, and it was a Monty Python reference from the Quest for the Holy Grail. If you guys are familiar with Monty Python, if you are not, you definitely should go watch that movie. It's really hilarious. Uh, it's a movie I grew up with watching. It's one of those kind of quirky, funny, weird, strange, all sorts of things, but the um, I'll draw the winners right now, so I'm going to use a random number generator. I will use my phone to help me do that, and I'll have Siri pick some, here we go, um, I'll have Siri pick some random numbers. So let us go to the Ravelry group, shall we? Together. Let's do this together. Um, we have questions, too. Mm -hmm. Questions. Forget to answer questions. All right. I locked the thread on Friday, just like I said I was going to, but I hadn't drawn the answer until now. So we had 42 entrants to the giveaway. And so I'm going to have, okay, Siri, can you choose a random number between 2 and 43? Random number between 2 and 43 is 18. 18. Let's choose C number 18, who the winner is. Da -da -da, drum roll. 18. It is uh, Linda. Your The Ravelry username is Ostruska, and I will put it here on the screen. Uh, Linda, hello. How are you? Uh, so her answers to the question was that her name was Linda. And her quest was to finish all her whips before 2018, and that's a wonderful goal. And the answer to what is the airspeed velocity of an African, uh, of a, a late, uh, unladen swallow, she said 24, which is just fine. <laughs> um, so congratulations, Linda, you're the first winner of the giveaway. Now let's draw the second winner. Okay, Siri, can you choose a random number between 2 and 43? Random number between 2 and 43 is 36. Number 36. Let's go find out who is 36. 36 is a Ravelry user, a Glatt Strick, G-L-A-T-T-S-T-R-I-K-K. Uh, congratulations, you are the second winner. Uh, her name is Vonch, V-W-E-N. C-H-E, I'd like to learn more about dyeing yarn, and she didn't know the question to the answer to the swallow question, which is okay. Congratulations, Glatstrick, you are the second winner. So if you guys could, please message me on Ravelry with your contact information so I can get these packages to you as soon as possible. Um, I didn't pair any yarn 
with the packages yet. I want the winners to choose what their favorite color is um, just to be sure that you're getting the yarn that you want. So if both of you could just look into my Etsy shop and find a yarn that you like that is in stock, I am happy to ship one skein of it off to you wherever you may live. So uh, thanks so much for entering uh, for everyone. So the correct answer to the African or uh, <laughs> I keep trying to say the answer. The correct answer to the third question, which is what is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? The correct answer is to ask me, is it an African or European swallow? <laughs> Not that it really matters. Maybe I can put the clip in. I don't know uh, if copyright prevents me from doing so, but um, you're supposed to cross the bridge of truth and you answer me this question to me. What is your name? My name is uh, Sir Galahad. Uh, what is your quest? I seek the grail. And what is the airspeed velocity of an unlaid swallow? And you ask the bridge master, African or European. They say, I don't know. And they go flying off the bridge. You know, it's just something. I don't know if you <laughs> find it funny, but I do. All right, so let's look at the giveaway prizes. Um, so along with one 100 gram skein of yarn of your choice, you are receiving this little care package. I apologize for any crinkling. I'll try not to crinkle. I showed some of this stuff before. So some note cards and some sticky notes and some pencils. <clears throat> also a moleskin journal. So these are really nice for knitting journals, uh, for keeping track of things. This is a lined journal, so um, there's that. A small candle. I got this from Target because Target's my gym. I got most of these things from Target. Can you smell? Can you smell? Mmm, it smells so good. Uh, it's a coconut, coconut candle. Uh, a little pouch with some tea in it and a couple of more pouches. I found that they're really cute. These can be good for notions or extra hooks or needles, uh, where, whatever you'd like to keep in them. Some gummy bears, of course, because life is not complete without gummy bears. And then, of course, a skein of yarn. So, pretty yarn to go in the package and both of the care packages are exactly the same. So I hope that you enjoy this little prize. It's my way of saying thank you to you guys for um, being here with me, for sticking with me, uh, and just kind of hanging out and talking about little crafty things. Okay, so that's 10 minutes in. I hope I didn't drone on for too long. Um, let's get to some questions. I saw that I had a couple of questions in the Ravelry group. And we'll just get those out of the way right away. So let us see. Okay. So one question here was from I, I sad faith is sad faith. Uh, I S A D F A I T H. Uh, I think you've talked to me before. I recognize your username. Uh, the question <clears throat> is Hi Kayleen, how do you put the sparkles in? The dye for the yarn and what are the sparkles. So the sparkles in the yarn are actually part of the yarn itself. So it is a special fiber called Stellina and it's a sparkling fiber and when the yarn is spun it is spun into the yarn itself. So the sparkles don't go in the dye, they go they're in the yarn itself and then when they're dyed um, the sparkles don't take up dye in the same way as the rest of the yarn does. So normally you can dye it and then the sparkles excuse me, show up um, on top of the color background. So for example, something like this, the sparkles here are in the yarn and the dye is, the dye has dyed the wool and the sparkles are left undyed. Now if your color is really saturated, so um, if it's a really deep dark black or burgundy, there are certain colors that I dye, she knows, allergies, Whoa. Uh, there are certain colors that I dye that tend to want to um, dye the Stellina as well, like aubergine. I think there's a couple of browns that like to do it as well. I think it's just the dye molecules are small enough to get in there. Uh, so yeah, I hope that answers your question. Uh, the second question I have is nuts for knits. I like your username. <laughs> um, the question is, your podcast seems sharper and clearer than some others. Can you tell me what kind of camera or phone you are using for recording? So I usually like to keep that information in the down bar uh, below. I've, I put it in my question and answer video. Um, if you visited my channel, 
uh, and you're not a subscriber, the first video that you see on the page is questions and answers too, and I answer that question there, but I'm happy to answer it again. Um, <clears throat> I use a Canon G7X Mark II, that's my camera of choice. I also have an external microphone. Uh, this is the Samson, <laughs> I had to look at the name, the Samson C01U Pro microphone. Uh, and my editing software of choice is, well, I import the sounds via GarageBand, so I can precisely edit uh, the sound properties. I was using iMovie as an editing program. Last week I tried out uh, Final Cut, a trial of Final Cut Pro. I like Final Cut Pro for editing things together, but it doesn't have uh, the title screens that I like, so I'm going to try and figure out a way that I can edit and include the title screens that I like <laughs> um, for the podcast, because I like really clean, crisp, you know, simple um, editing. So that is what I'm using. Uh, my computer is a MacBook Pro. I have, let me see, I can give you the exact, I have an external hard drive as well. I think it's like a one terabyte external to help store all of my footage. I think it's one terabyte. Three terabytes, sorry, three terabytes, a small Seagate external. I think it's Seagate. <laughs> <laughs> preparation right um, and my computer it's running the most recent version of Mac OS it is a MacBook Pro and it is the um, it has a 2.7 gigahertz Intel Core i5 processor with 8 gigabytes of RAM and that's really all that's needed I got it in 2015 so it's not super old computer it has enough uh, processing capacity to do what I need it to do. Uh, it doesn't have a really large hard drive, so I can't store anything on it, which is why I have an external. So <laughs> that's it. Uh, the G7X is also what I use to take photos from my shop and with an enclosed light box. And it's pretty much the bomb. The only limitation is that there's no external input on the camera like there would be for a DSLR for a microphone. So I do use an external mic. I record the audio the audio, <coughs> the audio separately from the video, and then I merge them together in a processing software. <laughs> okay, so hopefully that was quick enough. I hope I didn't ramble on too much. Okay, so I don't have any more questions there. Again, thank you guys so much for being here with me. I have a lot of stuff to talk about. I have some knitting, I have some crochet, I have some yarn dyeing to share with you. I have some acquisitions to share with you and works like works in progress. Did I say that? I think I said that. <sighs> okay, so it's Tuesday after a long weekend. It's just out of my mind. So let's just start with my works in progress. I've just made a mess of these yarns. Okay, so I just started this project today. It is only just beginning. Um, as some of you may know, if you followed me for a while, you know that I work down at my local yarn shop. I teach crochet on the weekends, I teach crochet on Saturdays, so if you are local to me, um, then you <laughs> are welcome to come visit me and learn crochet. But I just started a new project. This is a... I'm so not prepared today. This is a Japanese knot bag. This is a Stitches West pattern from last year. It's not in color, I'm sorry. Um, but it is made with raffia yarn. So I'm teaching a class specific to this market bag. And I just started this today. It's a two color bag. So I am using this multicolored Yashi Miro. Uh, this is in the colorway Beach Umbrella. Where's the label? I keep wanting to show the microphone my labels. Uh, and this is the color. So it's this paper yarn, pretty much. Uh, very easy to work with. You can see it here. And then I decided to pair it with just a contrast black. This so far is just a basic increase using half double crochets. Nothing crazy has happened yet. But the cool thing about this bag is that it has one longer handle and one shorter handle. So you can tuck the long handle to the short handle and close up the bag, which is kind of cool. So yeah, it's kind of cool. I'm kind of enjoying it a lot. So we'll see how this goes. 
uh, it's just increasing in the round. You are doing separate rounds, but what I am doing here in the transition is when I'm slip stitching to the next row, I'm inserting my hook in and I'm picking up with the second color. So I'm just carrying the color up the back and instead of here picking up with the black raffia, I'm picking up with the multicolored raffia. And it's coming along nicely and it's disguising the seams that would be there if there would be an obvious seam otherwise. So um, yeah, this is the bottom of the bag. It's not too holy. I'm wondering how much this will stretch and grow once you load things into it. Uh, that would be my only guess uh, the, the, of things that would change. This is the hook I'm using. It's an H hook. It is a boy five millimeter hook. Uh, boy is my hook of choice. Um, I know people, people are very specific with needles and hooks that they like. I like boy. No particular reason. It's just the hook I've always used. I do enjoy the construction of it. It's not too sharp underneath the hook part of it, so it's not going to catch a lot or split the yarn a lot. So that's why I like it. Okay, I've made a big mess like my raffia mess. Okay, um, so other works in progress. I have two other works in progress and one is new knitting and one is old crochet but you guys haven't seen it in a few weeks and I've made some progress so let me show you that now. Okay so let's show the crochet first. Um, this is in my Exploding TARDIS bag by Molly Klein Design. I bought a bunch of bags from Molly and I dyed some yarn to go with the bag. And I just kind of been using it. So this is the hook I'm using for this project. This is a J hook. Um, again, it's a boy. It's a 5.75 millimeter hook. And I'm stitching using my Elder Tree colorway in my Everyday Sock base. So it's a fingering weight base. And the project I've been working on is the Simple Scallop Shawl. On, woo, I'm unraveling. <laughs> I'm unraveling this. Okay, so hopefully it doesn't get too blown out that you'll be able to see. So here's where I left off last time that you saw and I've made probably three more repeats of the lace. So this is a lacy shawl. It's a one, a one skein wonder so to speak. I suppose you could use more than one skein. I haven't weighed it to see how far in the skein I am but I'm thinking I'm about 70 grams into the skein. The last time you saw me I was about 50 grams into the skein. So I haven't made a ton of progress. I think maybe I'm 65 grams. I don't think I'm that far. I don't think I'm 75 grams. I take that back. I think it's closer to 65 grams. But here's the project. It is a nice green color. Elder Tree is a very woodsy feeling color. It feels like tree bark. Um, it kind of looks like camouflage a bit. But what's cool about this shawl is that it's knit in scallops. And when you block it, it really opens up this lace. So it's going to grow a lot because I'm also using a large hook for the um, for the yarn size and I'm making sure to crochet loosely. So it will grow a lot. It will be very spidery looking. Um, that's why I didn't want to use something that was too speckly. I just wanted something that had this um, consistent palette. So that's the progress on that. I decided to take it out of the graveyard last week and just work on it a little bit. I didn't get as much done as I would have liked, but again, my time is limited <laughs> with uh, projects, so, okay. And then the other project is a knitting project, so I have it in my feathers bag. This was made for me by Lynn. We have some kits that are up in both of our shops that are with this bag. Um, it's a self-striping yarn called Fleur, but I'm using this to stitch a pair of socks for my husband. This, I'm knitting my socks two at a time. So you can see in there I have some yarn barf, but I have two cakes of yarn. Um, and then here is the progress I've made. So I cast these on Saturday night. I'm pretty sure Saturday night. And this is all I've gotten finished. So this is uh, Jinx Yarns Color. I bought this last year. Um, I did show it on the podcast, but it is in the colorway Rapture, which is a Bioshock inspired colorway video games. And it is on her BFL base, so it's a very sturdy yarn. It feels really nice. Um, it's not as soft as merino, but it's not unpleasant to touch. And I really feel like these are going to be hard-wearing socks. So I'm very excited to knit these for my husband. I have knit, I don't even know how many rows in my cuff. Probably a good inch and a half 
of one by one ribbing. I did a long tail cast on, but I cast on just a little bit loosely to make sure there's enough stretch. And I did a 60 stitch sock on US, I think these are ones, US size ones. These are the Addy Turbo Sock Rockets, which I love. These are my favorite sock knitting needles. Um, <clears throat> so I decided to cast these on by hand, even though I do have a sock knitting machine, because I wanted them to be a little bit special. And I thought maybe I would do a patterning on the front of the sock, and then I decided not to, that I just wanted to do stock knit. So those are coming along very nicely, but they fit well in this bag. And what I like, let me just say, this is why I like drawstring bags, because they're very easy to fold over. So this is a pretty tall bag. It's as big as my head. Uh, when it's all zipped up, it has a nice sturdy ribbon. But then when you open it, you have enough room in here to be able to fold down your project and kind of use your bag as a yarn bowl. And that's why I love, 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 love drawstring bags. Now I like zipper bags too, but I like zipper bags that are <clears throat> not angled in. I prefer zipper bags that are either straight or angled out just slightly so that you can still do that and fold down the sides of the bag. Um, it's not, there's no interfacing in here, so it's a very um, flexible bag, which I also like about it. Um, if it were stiffer, that would be okay too, but once it has yarn in it, and you're using it as a bowl, I don't find that it collapses or anything like that. So that's what I have to say about that. <laughs> I don't know. I was going to cast on the sock and do it on my sock machine. So I like my sock machine. I use it to make sample socks. Like this is a sock I made. This isn't my yarn. This is Casual Fashion Queen. This was a one of a kind colorway. Um, not one of a kind, but a limited run called Mermaid's Dream. It was with a kit that Sheena did. Uh, with a small bag. So I did this sock on my sock machine. It's a 60 stitch sock machine cylinder and you know the tension is not super tensioned <clears throat> and I thought well why wouldn't I just you know this is a three by one rib why wouldn't I just do cast onto my machine with waste yarn do a three by one rib you know a stockinette a three by one on the front with a stockinette back, so continuing knitting, and then doing the second sock, and then the ribbing of the second sock and casting off, doing kind of like an uh, afterthought everything on the machine. So I decided I'm going to do that, but I decided I was going to fiddle around with my tension because I never fiddled around with my tension before. So this is the bonnet for my machine, so I use this to cast on. This is my waste yarn, it's just scraps. Uh, this happens to be the exploding TARDIS color. So I cast on, and you will notice that this yarn is extremely tight. <laughs> uh, this is this from the same machine, 60 stitches. The tension is just out of this world. Um, so I did what I said I was going to do. I did a 3 by one rib for the cuff, and then on the front I continued a 3 by one rib. On the back I did plain stockinette knit enough for a foot, what I thought was going to be enough for a foot, to cut for toe, stitch out a toe, cut, stitch in a heel. Uh, but the tension is so tight that I cannot even get needles in there to cut the knitting. <laughs> uh, I tried putting in my size 1 double points and they do not fit into these stitches. They are just too tight. So this, this was a fail. Uh, I'll just reuse the yarn and try again. Um, this was a little bit too loose, so I have to find a happy medium between this, which is like the tightest, tightest knitting. It's like one of those finger toys where you're, you stick your finger in and you can't get it out. A Chinese finger trap, that's what it's called. Um, that's what it feels like. It's pleasantly snug. I mean, I enjoy snug socks, but if I'm going to do an afterthought, I will need to loosen the tension. Um, I also got a request from a customer down at the yarn shop, because she knows I have a knitting machine, um, if I could knit her a few pairs of socks on my knitting machine. Even though I like to do the heels on the machine, it's very stressful with the kids. I find it to be less stressful if I can just knit a tube and then cut in. I feel like that would be, you know, a little easier. So I'm going to try this experiment again this week, and I'm going to loosen the tension a little bit. Um, 
So yeah, this is another work in progress, I guess. I'm just trying to experiment with my knitting machine. And then the other experiment that I was doing today, so I have a bunch of cotton yarn. So this is organic cotton. And I decided that I wanted to try and make washcloths using my knitting machine, so my sock machine. And, you know, this is DK-ish, you know, DK to light worsted weight. And so I was experimenting with tension, and this is waste yarn. I have a bunch of scraps, so this is waste yarn. And I don't know, I was trying to figure out a way to use up some of my cotton yarn because I don't feel like crocheting um, these washcloths. So I was experimenting. These are a bit small. I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it on my sock machine. But this is what I was also working on. Not, not that exciting. Okay. So let's get into acquisitions. Um, I did some purchasing. <laughs> Whoops. Um, and I also had some things sent to me. So let me show you the things that were sent to me. So Emily from Misty Mountain Makers, she follows along the podcast. So hi, Emily. Um, she is also a dyer. Uh, she dyes fiber and yarn. And she hosts the weekly podcast as well. I think it's called Down the Rabbit Hole on YouTube. So if you want to, you can always go follow her. Um, I'll leave a link for her channel in the description box below. But she contacted me on Etsy and she said that she wanted to send some things gratis to me um as a thank you for the podcast and I said okay and she said I want to send some extra so you can have some things to give away and of course I love giveaways and I like to share the love and to be able to share things that are handmade for myself and from others with you guys um so I'll show you what she sent me so the first thing she sent me was these two skeins of sock yarn so one I will keep and one I will definitely give away um, this is on her Cordell nylon base. It's 75% superwash Cordell and 25% nylon. I think she calls it her Hassling base. So if you can guess. Oh, hello. Uh, I don't know if you heard that beep. Uh, hello. So, um, Misty Mountain is from Lord of the Rings. So a lot of her things are Lord of the Rings, um, and kind of fandom dyed as well. But this is called Candyland, the colorway. And it is on her halfling base. So it's a very squishy base. Um, it feels not as soft as, well, maybe on par with Merino in terms of softness. Um, not as coarse as BFL. But it feels sturdy. And I really like that about this. So here's her beautiful colorway. This is going to speckle up so nicely uh, when you stitch it. So I'm definitely going to keep this for myself. Well, one of them for myself, so that I can um, stitch some socks, perhaps. I just feel like they would make lovely socks. <laughs> it's just so squishy. Like, I wish you could feel this yarn. It is absolute squishy delight. So, thank you so much, Emily. Um, this is absolutely beautiful. And I love her labels. It's so cute. Can you see? Focus, please. Here it is, Misty Mountain Makers, and she's from Tennessee, so, um, yeah, that's that, and then she also sent, she said she wanted to send me some wool to spin, so as you guys have been following along with me, I've done some, a lot of spinning lately, and I've mostly spun either from combed top or carded roving, and she asked me if I'd ever spun anything from a bat before, and I have never done that. So for those who don't know, um, <clears throat> combed top is when the wool is prepped, the raw wool is prepped, and put through combs so that all of the fibers are facing in the same direction. Um, <clears throat> really good comb top is really lofty. It drafts really easily. Um, you can get very nice, thin, dense dense threads with it because of how it catches everything in the same direction. So it's really a dream to spin. I really enjoy comb top. Uh, carded roving. Uh, roving that's been carded, the fibers are kind of all over the place. So it's more textured and it might be a little harder to draft because the fibers will catch on each other, but it allows for a lot of air to stay trapped inside the yarn. So I feel like you can get a loftier yarn. I'm no expert, 
the neighbors are mowing their lawn and I'm sorry for that. So I'm no expert, but I would think that the extra air that gets trapped in between the fibers when they're facing all different directions would allow you to have a loftier yarn or a plumper yarn um, as a result. But yeah, anyway, so a bat, which I will show you here, this one is called Charlie, and this is a 4.9 ounce bat. It's a very generous bat. I apologize for crinkling. I'm going to try and edit it out. Okay, so this is a bat. It is lofty. It comes off of a drum carter, so she probably has a drum carter that you crank or is motorized, and she puts the fiber in, and these combs, kind of like what you would use to brush your dog, that kind of like a bristly comb, comes around and picks up the fiber and melds them all together. So this bat is gorgeous. I'm not going to unwrap the whole thing, but it's pretty much like roving. It's like pre-roving. You could take this through a diz and make a long snake of roving, or you can just, you know, rip this apart and spin directly from it. It is so incredibly soft. This is made from merino and falkland wool, bamboo, and firestar. So there is some sheen in it, some sparkle. It's so soft. Like, I literally just want to keep this like this. <laughs> um, I absolutely love it. Okay, and then this one is called Beyond the Wall. It is Cordial, Bamboo, Superwash, Merino, Tinsel, and Silk Noils. I don't know if this of the other one is Superwash or non-Superwash, but this has some Superwash in it. Cordial, Bamboo, Superwash, Merino, Tinsel, and Silk Noils. So Silk Noils give a really cool texture. So this is four and a half ounces. So just a little bit smaller than this blue bat and again this is so incredibly soft but you can see here all the silk noils so it'll make this lovely kind of tweedy looking texture when you spin it but I mean look at this wool it is like a wool gasm <laughs> in like a tube it is so soft and squishy I literally cannot get enough of this so Again, this is one that I just want to hug and squish and call my squishy, but one of these will get given away. Oh, I have fiber everywhere. Oh, I'm gonna have to vacuum. I'm gonna have to vacuum. Fiber everywhere. Fiber everywhere. I shouldn't have taken those out, but they were too squishy and lovely. Um, so anyway, I have those things. One for me, one for you guys. I'll decide when I'm going to give them away. I might wait a little while since we just had a giveaway. Um, but yeah, maybe for a knit along or crochet along or something later on this summer. Um, I'll give some of that away. But it's really soft. Like I wasn't sure how a bat was going to feel. Because I know that wool roving and comb top and stuff are really soft and fluffy. Um, sometimes hand dyed roving can be compacted so what that means is you know when it was dyed you know there was some pressure put on the wool so that the the fibers just compress together um, if things are too compressed things start to felt if there's a lot of um, friction or heat but even if things are com compacted it's easily pulled apart and drafted and it's like all like those bats just feel so airy and light like They've just been all pre-drafted, like fresh off of the drum carter because all the fiber had already been dyed previously. So it was like, you don't have the compaction from dyeing the roving itself because it's been carted through the machine. So anyway, very cool, very interesting. And thank you so much. I am looking forward to working with it. So the next acquisition is something that I purchased. And I have something else that I've purchased that isn't here yet, but it is shipping to me. Um, Cindy from Mon Sheep Shop had an update recently, I think last week, and these things arrived to me pretty quickly, so I could not resist some of her colors. She had one skein, um, so she does several types of yarn. She does her normal, your normal sock yarn, like 75-25, things like that. She also has some sparkle yarns, but then she has a line that she calls Feezy Feet, which is a sparkle self-striping yarn and there was one that caught my eye which was this one 
So this is called sushi. And when you knit it up, it looks like sushi roll. <laughs> so the black looks like the nori. And then the white is all speckled with different colors and it comes out looking like sushi socks. So I'm like, okay, I need this. So I'm gonna purchase this. She sent me this lovely, I keep wanting to show the microphone all of everything, why am I doing that today? She sent me some soap. I don't even know what the smell is. It just smells like clean. <laughs> I don't even know. Cindy, if you're watching this, tell me what's in this soap because it is absolutely to die for. We just focus, thank you. This cute little sachet, it made everything smell so wonderful. I can't even tell you what that smell is and it just smells delicious. Okay, so then I got a couple more skeins of sock yarn. Um, this one is on her petit pied. Petit pieds. If I was going to be strangely American. Uh, petit pied fingering weight, which is a 75-25 blend, 425 meters per 100 grams, which is around 463 to 465 yards. And it is in the colorway Supernova. <laughs> Mm, everything smells like the soap. So this is Supernova. And it is this these gorgeous greens and yellows and oranges. It's just gorgeous. Hopefully my battery won't die. Beautifully speckled loveliness. So I'm just so excited to stitch this up. And then the other one I got was Confetti. Confetti, which looks like sprinkles. And this is confetti. So it's all bright colors, pinks, greens, purples, orange. And it's on the same, happy stitching, um, the same base, the petit pied base. And then this is Fizzy Feet. I don't know if she has a name. I think she calls it Fairy. Her sparkle yarn, she calls it like Fairies or something. I'll have to put it on the screen. I can't remember. Uh, happy knitting. So yeah, this was my haul from Cindy's update. Thank you so much for sending this along. I love the soap. It smells delicious. And um, you'll have to let me know what's in that soap because I want to know. I just can't I just can't stop smelling it. Why'd you send something so nice? <laughs> uh, but yeah, great yarn doesn't travel alone, so I had to get a few skeins of yarn. My battery is going to die, so I'm going to put it on the charger, and we will be back shortly. Well, it'll be a, a second for you, but for me, a few minutes, um, and we'll do some shop update information and showing you the dye work I did this week. Hey guys, okay, so I've given about 45 minutes for my battery to charge. It's only been a moment for you, but it's been quite a while for me. Um, so I'm gonna try and get through all of this before my battery decides to die again. So while I was waiting, I did a little experiment. So I showed you this earlier in the podcast. So I adjusted the tension on my sock machine. I've already cast off the, um, the scrap so I can bind the cuff, but I did the same thing that I did before with a tube, and I just want to show you the length difference. Now this is the same amount of rows. So you can see that there is a distinct difference in tension. I'm actually able to get my needle in so that I can cut my work. Um, width wise, there is about, I don't know, I would say half an inch. Difference, flat, so an inch total circumference difference here, which equals about four inches of length. So I'm going to do this, bind off the cuff, cut out for toes. So I've um, left myself some room so I can put in toes um, and then cut in for heels. So heels will be cut in right about this point. And then here's the remainder of the foot. And then I'm gonna finish the foot with toe, foot with toe, and then go up here, cut the heel in just about here, and then bind off the top. So I will have hopefully two complete socks. 
maybe. I've never done an afterthought heel or an afterthought toe, so I am just learning as I go along. So I have my DPNs in there. I'm just going to do the um, surprisingly stretchy bind off, hopefully the right way. Um, I tried doing it on this, but the tension was so tight that, I mean, even though it's stretchy, it's still very, very, very tight. And the tension of my larger needles to what this was just makes a flare. So anyway, <laughs> that's what I was up to for the last 45 minutes. How have you been for exactly a second. Um, okay, so let me show you the things that I've been working on in terms of dye work. I did a big shop update on Saturday, and there are some things still available in the shop. Some things have sold out, unfortunately, but um, I'll be getting to more dyeing this week, so let me just show you what I have. Okay, so the first thing that I want to show you is a dye pot soaker. This was um, a couple bases that I had just soaking and while I was dyeing and I had to exhaust some extra dye I just threw them in the dye pot. These aren't even listed yet, they weren't even photographed but it's just grays and greens and just kind of everything. Um, these got all dyed together so as I needed to exhaust dye or if I wanted to play with color I literally just through dye in the pan. So I have a couple on sparkle. They were dyed at the same time, but they're fairly different. One on every day. So these will probably go up next weekend, just as one of a kinds. And then one on yak, which came out pretty saturated and dark. So it's navies, greens, blues, yellows, chartreuse, gray, just kind of all thrown together. Dye pot soaker, nothing, no big deal. Okay, so in this update, I put in some skeins that I don't normally dye on, bases I don't normally dye on. One was on a tweed base that I had just kicking around. I was waiting for my everyday sock to get in, and I had some extra base. So this is Wormtail on tweed. I think I have two of these left. Uh, very cool looking, I think, on the tweed base. This is an 8515, so Superwash Merino and Nep, which is a nylon that... Um, makes it look like wool nips in there so they don't die up. And then this is Wormtail on every day. There you go. So, greens, some blues, some kind of yellowish color in there. So Wormtail on both those. Um, and then I also dyed up some on Yak. So the only thing that I dyed on Yak this week was Bobeton, and I think this is all sold out. This is the last skein, and I think somebody already picked it up. But I wanted to show it anyway to see, show you how different colorways look on that base. I dyed more Luna on Everyday Socks, so I do have some of this still available. As you can see, it's a nice, bright colorway, delicately speckled. And yeah, just very whimsical and light. And then the new colorway I dyed this week was based on Lavender Brown, uh, the movie representation of Lavender Brown. So we have some mauve and navy and some yellow. And I called this one Lav Lav. And I gotta make a one one to go with Lav Lav. Uh, but I think these look very cool together. I think they would make a nice pairing for a fade. Uh, this has brighter pinks. And this blue tone here, this is actually a blue-violet. It shows up very blue, but it is a blue-violet. Oops, sorry for that. <laughs> um, you can see the breaking of the color here. So it is a blue-violet. In some places it shows up more blue. And then this is a true navy. And mauve. So it's a little more heavily speckled. This is a lighter speckle. So I thought those were really cool. Okay, and then the other things that I had, so I had a request for Molly. So this is Molly Weasley on Everyday Sock. Sand tones, a nice neutral gray and peach. And then of course I had lots of requests for Don't Call Me Nymphadora, so I brought her back on Everyday Sock. Uh, at the last step shop update, this sold out really fast. So I wanted to make sure that you guys had some extra in case you wanted her. <laughs> and then the last thing I dyed up this week was sock blanks. So I dyed up 
what I had left in stock for sock blanks, undyed um, blanks, but I wanted to show you what I did. So I did a gradient on them. So pretty, you know, so great. So this is the rainbow. This is on single knit. So it goes from tones of violets, deep blues, lighter aquas, dark and light greens, to yellows, oranges, and reds. So this is the single knit. I feel like this would make an awesome shawl. Um, it would speckle up. It would have this really interesting depth of color because of how the dye um, speckled on the surface. So as you can see, my dye, my sock blanks often have the same type of feel. No matter what the colors are, I really like this kind of tie-dyed effect. And I feel like it would just lend, it lends itself really to something that's very interesting and unique at the end. So, um, and um, I know a lot of folks are like, what do I do with the sock blank? Um, you know, you can unravel directly from the blank. So there's an open end here and you can just pull and knit. And yes, the yarn is kinky when it comes out, um, but you can relax it by soaking it. Uh, if you're also interested in the colorway, but you don't want it in a blank form, I'm always happy to skein up the yarn for you. Um, just unravel it onto my skein winder, soak the skein to relax it a little bit, and then ship it off to you. I'm also happy to do that. Um, you just have to let me know in a note to seller. So any single single knit sock blank, that if you like it and you don't want it as a blank, then you can just let me know and I will... I will unravel it for you and relax the yarn a bit uh, by soaking it and drying it again. Otherwise it will just come to you like this, which you can also do that on your own, but if you don't want the hassle, I'm always happy to do it. So that's a single knit one. I have a double knit one of rainbow and then there were two more that were single knit. One was the flu network and I'll put a picture here that sold out, and then also um, Hagrid's Secret Meeting, which I'll also put a picture here. Uh, that one also sold out. That was an interesting inspiration. I was hoping to be able to do a podcast on Friday, but I, I didn't have a chance because of the holiday weekend. So um, Hagrid's Secret Meeting was inspired by the meeting that Harry had with Hagrid, it, where in the Goblet of Fire, Harry was entered into the Triwizard Tournament not willingly. I won't spoil anything if you don't know any of the story, but he and Ron had a falling out, and the entire time Hermione's like, Ron wanted me to tell you that Dean told Pavardi told him that Hagrid's looking for you. And that special meeting that he went to with Hagrid was to show him the dragons in the woods. That were that was part of the first task. So this sock blank I took, I, I was thinking of that scenario in my head, and then I just put it onto the yarn. So it was these dark greens and some blue, like darker blue tones to add depth, and then going into these fiery reds and oranges and gray and black speckles. So it was like going from the woods into this fiery, fiery color and then back into this green for the woods. So you could knit uh, matching, matching socks or very similar socks from it. So um, that was also a really fun one to dye because it came conceptualized it came from a concept first and then became conceptualized afterward. Um, Flu Network, I was dying because I wanted to die with those colors. And I'm like, oh, this reminds me of when they take the flu powder and foom, and go into the chimney. Um, so it was these vibrant purples into like, like dark, dark grays and purples and then into more vibrant purples and then into greens and chartreuse. So it was this cool, um, this cool effect. So those were the two that sold out, sorry. <laughs> Uh, so I have rainbows that are left, and rainbows are awesome. I feel like rainbows go with almost anything. And then the last one, I have a couple left of this, and this is called Speckled Unicorn. So I wanted to take the colors that reminded me of a unicorn and speckle them out onto a sock blank. So these have a regular repeat, so it goes from purples to pinks to yellow to gray, purples to pinks to yellows to gray. So you can get uh, somewhat matching socks or similar socks out of a single blank. You know, uh, depth and variation of color. They're not going to be identical. You can see there's less yellow on this side than there is on this side, but I think it would be really cool to see them knit into socks 
or even into a shawl or anything else, a sweater. Uh, I think it would be a cool sweater. It'd be subtle kind of striping on a sweater uh, with the regular change of color. Let's try to roll it up. Roll it up. Roll like up. So yeah, so that's Speckled Unicorn, and then I also had it on a double knit blank. I, there was only one of these, and it's still left. So if you're at a, a two-at-a-time sock knitter, um, you can knit this colorway at the same time on both socks. So yeah, that is it. I don't think, no, there's nothing else in my dye pot this week aside from those things. Um, I did bring back flowers for Dobby. I think I have one skein left. I didn't bring it out here. I forgot it in the other room. But um, anytime that you guys have a request for a colorway, if you want to see something you haven't, we haven't seen in a long time, I'm happy to entertain requests. So you can always leave me comments here on my videos or send me a message on Etsy if there's something that you want to see. So let's get into daily life chat and we'll talk about what's been going on. So we had a pretty good weekend. Uh, it was very busy. We did have a cookout on Sunday. Uh, Memorial Day is not usually like this huge holiday for us. Mostly we, we have family who've been in the military military, and really kind of it's for me at least it's a day of reflection and to think about and thank and honor those who have fought, who have been killed, who have come back into civilian life from being in the military who had fought for our country. So for me, it's a little more of a day, even though it's a celebratory day of our country and honoring those through celebration, for me, it's also a day kind of of reflection and being thankful uh, for what we have, even if I don't agree with the current administration or I'm not happy with the current administration, it's still a day to be thankful for those who are truly fighting for our freedom and who really do stand on the line for our country. So that was this weekend. We had some really cute moments. Now, after all that seriousness, um, Cecilia and Tucker, we went to Tyler's grandmother's house and they were riding in this wagon side by side and it was so adorable. Tucker's waking up. It was so cute. They were riding side by side, and I'll put a picture here. Cece had her arm around Tucker, and it was just the most adorable thing uh, on the face of the earth. Uh, I couldn't I couldn't get enough, and Cece leaned over to him and said, Tucker, I love you, and it was just the first time that she really said that to him without me saying, like, oh, say I love you to Tucker, or say goodnight, or say something to Tucker. Um, she kind of just said it on her own, so it really warmed my heart to hear her say that. Um, so that was really fun. And then probably the only other thing I want to talk about is Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is coming back. The new season should be starting in a couple of weeks here from when I post this podcast. And I don't know about you, but I'm so excited for it. I cannot wait, cannot wait. Um, it is one of my most favorite shows. I've read all the books. Uh, I can't wait for the next book to come out so we can actually have some more detail on things that are happening in, happening in Westeros. But in terms of the show, the show is caught up with the books, and so pretty much everything from here on out is unknown territory for everyone. So I'm extremely excited for this season, and I'm hoping that they take it in the direction that I think they will. Uh, for those of you guys who are also fans of Game of Thrones, my husband does write a blog. He does it through the season... Um, he usually just sends it out to his work folks, but I told him that I would plug it here on the podcast because I know a lot of you guys are like-minded. So if you are interested in that, I'll leave the link for it uh, down below and I'll put it here on the screen. I think it's nerddadstuff.wordpress.com. And he pretty much just writes about Game of Thrones and other nerdy things that he's interested in, uh, mostly Game of Thrones through the season. If you're not wanting spoilers, do not read the blog, please. I don't want you to get spoiled if you don't want to get spoiled, but he goes into a lot of detail and he goes into a lot of fan theory and things that, you know, we think will be happening in the next season and concluding the story. So he has some really interesting theories. I think you guys would like it. So anyway, Tuck is waking up, so I have to conclude this podcast and get to editing and putting all of this stuff away because around me, even though you see there's a mess behind me, there is a mess all over here and all over here. So I to get to gleaning that um 
As always, if you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and let me know that you liked it. And if you're not and you like this podcast, definitely subscribe. I apologize <laughs> for the crying baby. Um, but yeah, if you like it, hit subscribe. And if you want to get notifications, make sure you hit the bell icon that's next to the subscribe button. Um, yeah, I hope you guys have a wonderful week. I probably will have a little bit of a shop update this Saturday, so keep a lookout for that on Instagram. And as always, happy stitching. Have fun creating things and share with me the things that you've created. I love to see them. So I will talk to you guys soon. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!